Hello friends, this is Durga again from iDiversity. So let's get into collections in Scala. If you want to get the official documentation of uh, Scala collections, you just click on this link and it will take you to the official um, documentation of Scala collections. So these are the uh, advantages of uh, advantages or characteristics of uh, Scala collections. They are easy to use. You can use small vocabulary of 20 to 50 methods um, to solve most of the collection problems. Concise, you can uh, do lot of stuff with very few lines of, uh, very few words of code. Uh, safe, um, uh, collections are, Scala collections are pretty safe. Uh, one of the reason is uh, the static type checking where it solves lot of compiler, uh, lot of issues at the compile time itself. Um, Scala collections are very fast and they are fast in performance, they are fast in development because they have a limited set of APIs to perform most of the tasks. Universal uh, collections provide same operations on any type. For example, uh, if you know the difference between uh, list and array, list is a, um, uh, a, a number of homogeneous elements, uh, sorry, list and set. A list is a number of homogeneous elements uh, um, in a collection and set is a uh, distinct uh, elements in a collection. If you, uh, and uh, these two are dif two different types of collections and still the methods or functions uh, which are used to manipulate uh, these lists and uh, sets are uh, uh, similar in most of the scenarios. Uh, that's why uh, Scala collections are termed as universal. And uh, th uh, this is the example, um, uh, so let me demonstrate this. Uh, it's a simple uh, code snippet and um, I will explain a little bit here. Uh, you might not be able to digest completely, but as we proceed further about uh, Scala collections, you should be able to understand. So one of the ways, so here I'm using uh, REPL, uh, just use Scala to launch uh, REPL. And here, uh, one of the ways to quickly create a collection is by saying 1 to 100 or I think even you can say 1 to 100. Okay, you can see it has created a collection of type range. Okay, range is one type of collection where the numbers are in uh, sequence. You can also say 1 to 100 by 2 and uh, you will get all the odd numbers with, from 1 to 100. So like this, you can get the range of values. And if you want to convert into a list, list is uh, uh, most common collection. I, I don't think even you need to convert it into a collection. You can say, let's say I want to divide the integer numbers and the odd numbers into two different collections. So you can say, even and odd into two different collections. So you can say val even comma odd. So here I am declaring two variables and then I am saying 1 to 100 which will create the range. And uh, there is a function called partition here. Okay, you can use that partition which um, which needs to return true or false based upon certain criteria. A true will give go uh, the values which return true will go to the first uh, variable, and the values uh, which returns false will go to the second variable. In this case, if I want to um, uh, pass on all the even numbers to a collection called even, I can say partition, and here I can say underscore underscore. Uh, is using uh, a parameter here, okay? And uh, here we are trying to use anonymous function where we are providing the functionality directly as part of um, uh, passing the parameter to partition, okay? So underscore dot, you can say, uh, sorry, here there is only one uh, uh, one element uh, in the collection. If you look, if you go back and look at this, uh, so, 1 to 100 is nothing but a collection and each element in the collection is nothing but a integer number, okay? So, here 
uh, underscore represents one integer number at a time and I am saying mod 2 equal to 0 okay and hit enter. Now you can see it has created two collections one is even and one is odd. Uh, so this is how you can uh, start exploring the collection. I have created a collection of type range by running this command and then I used an API called partition and I divided uh, the collection into two, uh, two mutually exclusive sets. All the values which returns true go to one collection and all the values which return to uh, which returns false go to another collection and we will see many other APIs um, as we proceed further. So this is how you can uh, manipulate collections. One of the function is partition which divide the data set into two based upon the um, condition which we pass here and this is called as anonymous function. Okay, here we have act actually returning the result of a function. Okay. We will, uh, uh, we will get into more APS later. And uh, let us understand the high, high level hierarchy of scalar collections. At the top, these are all traits. At the top, we have a trait called traversable. And it has many methods. Uh, one is abstract and others are not abstract. They have default behavior because all the collections are typically traversable, which means we can traverse through the elements of the collection. Okay, we can uh, move on, uh, move from one element from the collection to other element in the collection. That that's why it is called as traversable. And uh, here you can see the list of APIs which are uh, provided as part of uh, the traversable trait. We have for each, um, which is abstract. Hence, if we implement uh, this uh, trait called traversable. We have to provide the implementation for this, and there is a class. Uh, sorry, there is another trait called iterable, which provides default behavior for the for each operation. On top of it, uh, iterators have a abstract method called iterable. So, if you want to make a collection iterable, you have to uh, implement iterator, and you have to provide functionality for iterable. So, once uh, so these two are the highest level of traits. When you say iterable, iterable is is a traversable with for each functionality. So here you can see all the functions that are available on traversable. So if you want to process data, one record at a time, we typically use map function, flat map function, collect function, etc. Now we will explore, explore these things as we proceed further. And then we can convert um, one collection to another collection. Okay, so you can convert list to an array, you can convert a sequence to an array, you can convert uh, array to list, so on and so forth. So if you want to convert from one collection to another collection, you have a method for each of them. Uh, so here, if access is of type list and if you apply to array, list will be converted to array. If access is uh, any other type of collection, um, uh, the, and if you apply to list, and the collection will be converted into list, and so on and so forth. We will explore all these in detail, at least the most important ones in detail as we proceed further. And then uh, we have functions to copy um, from one collection to another collection. Uh, there are functions related to size, there are functions related to retrieval, there are functions related to create sub collections of the uh, collection. And uh, there are uh, uh, functions to group the data and perform tasks on top of them. And then uh, uh, a few other, I don't know what these element conditions are. Uh, access for all P, uh, a boolean indicating whether the predicate P holds for all elements of access. I don't know, I haven't uh, explored it yet. But these are all different uh, methods that are available as part of the traversable. And these are the methods which are available as part of iterator. So if a, if a class implements uh, iterator, it will have access to all the element, uh, all the methods in traversable plus these additional methods in iterator, okay? So these are the things which you will be using in most of the cases irrespective of the collection type you are using. And collections are, uh, 
again categorized into mutable and immutable and we will see uh, those things in detail all sequ and and also um, if you see um, there are three main traits which extend iterable one is sequence one is set and one is map under sequence we get a collection such as array and uh, list under set we get sorted set bit set etc under map we get sorted map etc so we need to understand uh, the characteristics of sequence set and map and then we have to explore uh, the additional classes that are available under mutable and immutable collections and we will uh, look into those things as we proceed further this is just introduction to scalar collections we will explore all these things in detail and we will also demonstrate most of the important functions as we proceed further that being said thank you bye